This only happened a few months ago, so it's fairly recent, but it still definitely scares me to think about. Picture this. It's 8 a.m. and I'm waiting for the bus at an otherwise empty bus station. At least it was empty until this guy came and joined me. He stood pretty far away from me, but was staring in my direction intently. For the entire 10 minutes that we waited together, his eyes didn't leave me. That wasn't the weird part though. If he was just staring at me, I'd be creeped out, but I wouldn't pay much attention because creeps are everywhere. It was the way that he was staring at me, with such intensity in his eyes, brow furrowed, and his mouth twisted in a slight scowl. He didn't try to talk to me, but when the bus came, I thanked God and got on as fast as I could. Here's when things got creepy. The bus was a double-decker and mostly empty, yet he didn't get on, despite there only being one bus route that comes to that bus station. He couldn't be waiting for another bus. But anyway, I forgot about him until a few hours later. I was walking to grab coffee with a friend when she nudged me and whispered that there was a weird guy staring at me. I turned around to see for myself and it was the same guy from the bus stop in the morning. Despite me not knowing who this man was, he had somehow ended up at the same place that I was in. He was standing under a balcony, his hands in his pocket, and his face mostly hidden by a mask. He didn't try anything with us, but I could feel his eyes following me into the cafe. It terrified me, and I didn't feel safe for days. I never saw him again, but I still wondered how the fuck he knew which stop I had gotten off at, and if he was waiting for me to show up. The only conclusion my friend and I could come up with was that he had seen me in the spot before and followed me to the bus near my home, which makes this whole thing even scarier. A few years ago, about 2019, I was riding the bus one night to get home. There was this guy on the bus that was a little disheveled and dirty, reeked of alcohol, and generally acted weird. I was sitting in the back of the bus and he sat near me and tried to talk to me. I was polite at first. I ride the bus a lot at night so a drunk homeless guy doesn't bother me and I have no problem making small talk with a stranger on the bus. Plus, I'm used to there being one or two sketchy people on the bus considering the route and the fact that it's late at night. When he tried to get flirty, I politely told him that I was not interested and put my headphones back in my ears and ignored him. He got a little frustrated and said some vulgar things, but I couldn't really hear him, so it was fine. It's not my first rodeo in this kind of situation, and while it was uncomfortable and there's nothing okay with that sort of behavior, I rarely felt threatened. Most of the time, they are harmless, all bark, no bite, and I'm a big girl, as in tall and overweight. I know basic self-defense and always have an exit strategy when in scenarios that I don't feel safe. When people get like that on the bus, I find most of the time, ignoring them and acting like I'm not phased is enough to get them bored and they find something else to do. I only engage if they get in my face or start harassing other passengers, especially other women, kids, and seniors, or anyone who appears vulnerable because I'm not going to tolerate that. The bus drivers usually don't put up with that either if it escalates enough. Anyway, this random drunk homeless guy would have been one of many if it wasn't for what happened next. My stop was coming up and I was looking forward to going home. I was exhausted and so ready to get into bed. I pulled the cord indicator that I wanted to get off at the next stop and he gets up and walks to the front of the bus to talk to the driver and then laughs loudly. I didn't think much of it except I was a little weary thinking, please don't tell me we're getting off at the same bus stop. As the bus slows down, I'm walking to the back door to be let off at my stop. Instead of opening the back door, he opens the front door and lets the guy off. I ask the driver to open the back door and see him shake his head in the mirror. And annoyed, I walk to the front to get off the bus there and he closes the door before I can get off and starts driving. Angry, I say, what the hell, that's my stop. And the driver replies, sorry, I can't in good conscience let you get off the same stop as that guy. Either you get off at the next one, or wait until we get to the transit station and take the bus the other way. Not getting it, I asked. Why? Because of what he said to me. I asked him what he said and the driver says, Nothing that I can repeat, ever. I am so sorry, but just trust me. 
The driver actually looked shaken and considering the tone in his voice and the look in his face, as frustrated and anxious I was to get home, I trusted him and took his word for it. I caught another bus the other way at the next terminal and watched the driver radio dispatch to get some peace officers and transit security to patrol the area at the next stop. Then we parked in the next parking lot near the stop when I finally got off and I was extra paranoid and on high alert as I walked the next couple of blocks to my apartment that night. Fortunately, with no further incident, I never saw that guy again and I'm okay with that. To this day, I wonder exactly what he said to the driver. It bugs me not knowing, but at the same time, maybe it's better that way. Either way, the implications are enough to have me freaked out. I'm a 19 year old female, so this happened today and I'm still so creeped out by it. I was waiting by the bus stop to catch a bus home. I left college earlier than usual. But waiting for the bus, I thought I'd check some emails. All of a sudden, this man approached me. I didn't see him walking up to me because I was looking down at my phone. He says, in the most creepily monotone voice ever, Sweetheart, what time is it? Now, I know it might sound perfectly normal and polite to say it this way, but where I live, nobody would speak to you in English the first time they say or ask you something. They'd speak the local dialect and would only switch to a different language if you would tell them. And even then, I highly doubt a stranger would refer to you as sweetheart. Maybe dear, but that's about it. I was creeped out by the way he spoke those words, but I didn't want to seem rude, so I looked up at him anyway. About to say, it's 3.15 but I bolted as soon as I saw him. The man, around 40 years old I guess, had a huge open wound on his cheek with dried blood smudged across his face and he was standing way too close to me, like within a foot. He wasn't panting as if he had been in a fight. He didn't seem to care about his face being bloody. He didn't seem to be in pain and he seemed to be in perfect control of his body. Didn't seem to be drunk. Maybe he was, but it didn't seem like that to me. I don't know how to describe this properly, but imagine a man walking up to you with a huge gash across his face and asking you what time it is as if he knows you. I didn't say a word, just walked and jogged away from the man, and he left too, because when I turned to look back at him, he was gone. I got on the next bus that arrived, didn't even ask where it went, just climbed on because there was no way in hell I wanted to spend another second at that bus stop. For reference, I am a 16 year old male. I have longish reddish dyed hair and I wear eyeliner and was wearing all black denim at this time. I got off the bus and parted ways with my friend and made for the bus station to go home. After I stood in the queue, it was super long. I got tapped on my shoulder and when I turned around it was a mid to late 20s mixed race guy. I took my earphone out cause he started talking to me thinking he was asking me for directions or something. He proceeded to tell me that I was cute and tells me that when he saw me, he sprinted after me. His tone sounded off and I'm not really sure what it was about, but it was like he was oblivious to how creepy that was. He then asked to exchange various social medias to which I said I had none. He also asked me my name and if I'm from around there, to which I gave him false answers for both and said I only come here rarely to see a friend. He asked me how old I was, to which I replied 16, hoping to make him back off. It didn't. He asked me if I was single, to which I replied no. He then assumed I had a boyfriend, to which I said I had a girlfriend, to like put across that I don't swing that way. He kept following me up the line, and the only reason I kept talking to him was because I did not want to turn my back to him. I mean it when I say there was something badly off about him, and public error or not. I didn't want to end up getting touched or hurt or anything. Rather shoot the shit and come across as friendly to avoid him, maybe getting aggressive, than elevate the situation. Fortunately, as I was about to get on the bus home, he walked away. Maybe he thought it would make a scene if he tried getting on with me. Maybe he caught someone watching, or maybe he caught on that he was being a creep. I don't know. I'm just glad he didn't try to get on the bus with me. The last thing I wanted him knowing was where I went around. 
he confessed on sprinting after me and I wouldn't put it past him to doing the same thing when I got off the bus, hypothetically, if he managed to get on with me. I'm a transgendered male and at the time I was 18 and passed fairly well. I was dating someone online on and off for about a year and a half and finally saved enough money to get a Greyhound bus to get from where I lived to where she lived, which was 16 hours with a few bus switches. One of the buses stopped in Ohio, Cincinnati to be exact. This was the first time being out of my state ever and taking the bus besides the school bus and I was alone. I am a short guy around 5'2". It was probably around 4 or 5 a.m. when we arrived in Ohio. I sat down at a little cafe area and took my next bus, but there was this dirty, scrawny dude with a random license plate that sits across from me. He made a little small talk, then literally asked me if he could pay me for sex. I was freaking out already at this point, and I kind of froze and looked at the people next to me in hopes that they would help. I obviously tell this guy no and then he asked if he could sell me. At this point I get up and basically run as far into the crowd as I could and call my dad. The guy just appears and I don't see him again. The messed up part is I finally get to the girl and she tells me that her dad had a heart attack and I have to go, which I find out later was a lie. But I had spent all my money on the taxi to get from the last bus stop to her city, which wasn't cheap. Then I had to give her friend gas money to get me back to the bus stop. I didn't have enough for a room and my dad couldn't wire me any to get a room for the night. So I sat there at the bus stop literally until 8pm for the bus because it was a smaller part of town and I had to sit outside because the bus station was closed. It was honestly one of the scariest and most terrible times I've ever experienced. I study in a different city from the one that I live in. I have to do a 40 minute train ride every day to reach the uni I'm in. Last week when I arrived to the city, it was near 9am. I was thirsty and went to the local store in front of the train station. I got a water and bought some snacks. There was a man who was watching me from the moment I left the station till I crossed the road and talked to the guy at the store. I had no change so I pulled out a $20 bill. The guy saw it and instantly jumped to me, asking me to talk to him. I thought he was homeless and needed help, so I shared the snacks I just bought, since I thought he needed them more than I did. But the guy still stayed, told me to follow him around the corner, and I blindly did. Suddenly, he kind of hugged me. The issue is, I started smelling some kind of alcohol smell. It was very powerful that second. My head was in severe pain, and I don't know why. I started having a nausea feeling, and while he was holding me in a very weird way, he was asking me for my name. I told him to let me go and just take my food, but he didn't. I pushed him in a very powerful way to create distance between me and him, and started running. The guy started running too, but I had to go through a crowded area, and when I turned around, he no longer was. The headache was there for a whole day, and the smell didn't go away from my clothes for days after. I didn't get robbed and I lost nothing, but that was very weird and I don't know if I was wrong to treat him that way. I was at the bus stop a few weeks ago and it was me and some other person. While I waited for the bus home, he said that my breasts are a fetish to him. I never met this person and did not flirt or initiate this conversation. It was broad daylight and I was a bit creeped out. He kept talking to me about them and how he liked big boobs. When I told him I was married, he said, So? Then demanded I sit, like not a general come sit, but he barked it. The bus came shortly after and I got on. He asked if I lived that way and I didn't really give him information. I already have bad anxiety around men and it's been worse since the encounter. I'm glad it wasn't night out and the bus came when it did. This happened a few years ago when I was 21 and had to travel by bus regularly. It was a normal day. I left my home, took the bus down to the city and waited at the bus station for my next bus. Suddenly, a girl greeted me. She was cute 
so I thought that I may be lucky and I greeted her back. She asked if my name was Daniel, which was pretty confusing and scary. I said yes, probably already with some confusion in my voice. She asked if I took the bus often, how long the travel was, where I lived, and all kinds of weird stuff. It struck me as weird how quickly she just nodded and moved on to the next question. My younger self thought that maybe she was just in a rush or the kind of weirdo which talks fast. I even forgot during all these questions that she knew my name already, but she never told me hers. When the bus finally arrived, she said goodbye and just left. Didn't even take the same bus, which I realized after sitting down. Suddenly, the weirdness struck me and I realized how much she asked in a way that seemed more like a checklist instead of learning something new. A few days later, I met during the time my best friend. He was stressed, so I asked him what's going on. I knew he had some trouble with his parents, so I thought it might be something along those lines. He told me instead that his ex turned into a stalker. He never gave her a key, yet somehow, she suddenly stood in his flat when he got home from work. She messaged and phoned his parents in order to get an explanation to talk to him to accuse them of talking him into breaking up with her. She also visited him during work and made a scene, his boss being the person throwing her out of the building and threatening to call the police. I remembered the girl from the bus station. I described her even though I could only vaguely remember what she looked like and he nodded and told me that was her while getting pale. I asked how she knew me and why she wanted to talk to me, which he couldn't answer. She knew my name because he talked about me once, but never told her more than that. We didn't learn how she learned so much about me, and we never want to because he had it harder than me. He got terrorized at home by her, which drove him to the decision to finally call the police and get a restraining order. We never again talked about the situation because it was so creepy. The reason they broke up was her accusing him over and over again of cheating. She was the one breaking up with him, but also seemed to go mental at the same time. For the weekend, I wanted to visit my boyfriend. He lives two hours away, and I always go by train. I'm not easily spooked, but I always keep an eye out. One hour into the trip, it was around 8 p.m. then. I see two men getting on the same train compartment as me. I was sitting in the two seat and the seat next to me was empty and in front of me there were seats for four people, two pairs of seats facing each other. The men came in and became very loud even though it was a silent compartment but nobody said anything because they already seemed very suspicious from the moment they stepped into the train. Their eyes were fixated on me. They stepped through the doors and sat in the seat in front of mine, the four seat and from then on, they kept an eye on me while discussing things with each other in a language I did not understand. Like any other girl, I get stared at frequently, especially when I wear my hair down. It normally makes me feel a bit awkward, but I never feel unsafe when it happens. Until yesterday. But they were staring at me in every way possible. Through the chairs, standing up, sitting down, and bending over to get a good look through the reflection of the mirror and getting up and walking past me. They were taking turns walking over to the other compartment of the train. The compartment was only separated from mine with a glass door. Every time one of them got up, they both started staring at me. Then one of them went away and the other had clear vision of me and kept staring at me. He poked his head through the middle of the seats and offered me some chocolate, which I politely refused. Then the other came back and five minutes later, the man who did not go away yet went away in the same way. They kept taking turns walking away and every time one of them got up, the one who remained seated kept an eye on the other and on me. Each time they were sitting across from each other, they discussed things, but I could not translate it. They kept looking at me and then started discussing it again. When I had 20 minutes left on my trip, a lot of people got off at one stop. It was just me, them, and one other male. The moment the doors were closed, the creepy man started walking through the doors to check if there were any people coming in and maybe checking if there was security. I don't know why he did it, but when he came back, he scanned the train to see how many people were still there. From that moment on, both got in seats facing me 
They would not stop staring at this point. As you can imagine, I was panicked and was stressed the fuck out. So I slowly turned around to look behind the glass doors to see if there were more people there that could maybe help me. And to my luck, there were more people. So I slowly and very softly put my jacket on. We still had 10 minutes left then, and I kid you not, not even two minutes later, one of the other men starts getting dressed too. He took his jacket and kept looking at me and fixating on me. This was where I really panicked. I already let my friends know what was going on and my boyfriend was already at the train stop where I was supposed to get out. Then I contemplated what the smartest thing to do was because there was an emergency number on the train that you could call or text if you feel unsafe, but I had a gut feeling that this would not help me. So I got my bags, got up, and walked through the glass door to the other compartment. I sat facing them so I could see what they were doing. They both got up and grabbed their bags and started walking towards me. Mind you, they were sitting closest to the exit, so there was no reason for them to take this route. I rapidly started to talk to someone in the seat next to mine and asked them if they could help me. I told them I was getting followed and watched by two men. He said he also thought that they were very suspicious and was getting scared for me. He asked me to sit next to him so he could keep me a little safer and distract the men or something. Then he distracted me a little bit and asked me questions about my life. When the two creeps saw that I was seated next to that man, they were already coming my way and were making their way through the doors to my compartment. They heard glass doors so we could see each other very clearly. I had not shown my fear, but I was shaking uncontrollably that they must have seen how scared I was. The moment they got to the door, they saw me getting seated next to the other man and the creeps exchanged looks, looked at me, discussed something, looked at me again, turned around and went the other way. They were walking to the exit of the train where again is a glass door so we could still see each other. The whole time they were standing around the exit, they were looking at me with this very creepy and disturbing look on their faces. I'll describe it as, you got away, but you won't be lucky next time. That's how it felt. The man I was sitting next to was trying to calm me down. He told me he was not going to let me off this train by myself and would wait until my boyfriend would arrive. That was amazing and I felt comforted. But then the next stop came and we walked to the side of the exit and then came a realization. In the exit of the train, there were two other men standing there with the same kind of looks as the two creeps. They talked in the same language and they acted weird too. These men were probably the men the two creeps visited every few minutes. The men saw me exit, looked at me with that creepy look. But then the man kept me safe and made sure he walked with me and immediately they looked away. They also covered their faces with their hoods. The doors opened and I nearly sprinted out of there just as the other two creeps. Then the man that escorted me out waited for me until we found my boyfriend and then went about his day. We both could not thank him enough for keeping me safe. I thought I lived in a very safe country in Europe, but I think as long as you're a young woman on your own, you'll never be 100% safe while traveling or being alone. I hate thinking about what would have happened if I had not been helped by that man in the other compartment. I wish I could have thanked him with gifts or a nice gesture, but I don't know his name and will probably never see him again. To the man who saved me, I thank you all my heart. Two months ago on a cloudy, chilly day, I was waiting on a really crowded platform for a suburban train. It was late in the afternoon and the other line that went into a similar direction had been closed down for the day, so imagine the platform to be packed. Suddenly heads flew around as there was a voice of a middle-aged lady screaming her lungs out at someone. Can't you behave? I can't believe it. Wow. Okay, this is what my body looks like, okay? She seemed groomed, but not chic, like many others coming home from their blue-collar jobs that had worked mostly in the area of the city. She was in work attire too, carrying a canvas bag with her lunchbox in it. It was clear that she was not bedraggled. Her hair was washed, her shoes were well-capped. She didn't look like your average troubled homeless or drug-addicted person. It became apparent that she was yelling at a young teenage girl, probably 12 or 13, 
who was accompanied by her mother. I'm sorry, she mumbled. Sorry, the woman snapped back. I do have the fucking right not to be stared at by people constantly when I'm in public. Now the mother hustled her daughter behind herself and stepped in, trying to defend her. Please calm down, she's just a child. That's not a child, that's a teenager who should already know how impolite it is to stare at people. The woman yelled on the top of her lungs, with her eyes bulged out of her head. She rambled on about how sick and tired she was of people staring at her, how this was bad parenting, etc. Until the mother grabbed her now weeping daughter by the hand and fled from the platform. The woman's eyes beamed across the platform and locked with mine. I quickly lowered my gaze on my phone. Just a couple moments later, I heard her once again yelling at someone for staring at her. This time, it was an elderly man who didn't even answer. Obviously, this woman had a system. The man made a dismissive gesture with his hands and retreated into another area of the platform, passing me. That's when the crazy woman's eyes, one more time, caught me looking at her, turning her head on purpose to look at me. I figured she herself was staring at people and drawing their attention. When they looked back at her too often, she'd attack. I was really glad when my train arrived, but she entered with me and got in the same section, mumbling curses about, what are you looking at? While I kept looking at my phone as if my life depended on it, sweating and trying not to look if she was getting closer, but not to look at her really. I obviously was caught in the little game of hers. She was out to get me. After getting off, I was waiting at a fairly empty stop for the other train I needed to get into. She just walked circles and circles around me, round and round, wider and smaller, and out of the corner of my eye, I could catch that she was piercing me with her eyes the whole time, trying to catch me the second I looked up. My stomach turned and my heart pumped like crazy. She hadn't harmed anyone, but I still wanted to avoid being attacked verbally by her. Finally, a man standing near us seemingly had grasped of the unfortunate situation I was in and started approaching us. When the strange woman suddenly walked off into his direction, screamed, fucking asshole, just a few centimeters away from his face and bolted up the escalator, stomping like an angry child and yelling obscenities. I don't know what her problem was, I'm pretty sure she's mentally ill. It seems she believed people kept staring at her for her weight as she kept hinting to her tirades that she was eager to catch them. I'm just glad our eyes didn't meet again, and I hope they won't ever. This is a short story, and I very well may have been in immediate danger, but there's no way to know. I was 18 at the time. I lived in the suburb of a large city, and attended that city's university. I now you have a vehicle, and public transportation in my city is pretty shitty. Only buses, but, it didn't, but they didn't go out to my neighborhood. So I had to take a charter bus to the city, and then about three more buses to get to the university. During this time, I had got quite used to being catcalled and stared at, sometimes even followed for short distances. I always carried pepper spray, and since it was always broad daylight, I was never too concerned. But one day, I missed my first bus meaning to catch the next one if I wanted to get to class on time. I would have to walk about five blocks down the street and turn right for three more blocks. About halfway through the trek, I noticed a very large, unkept man following me. He seemed very unstable. We have a lot of heavy drug users in my city, some more dangerous to the public than others. As I finally approached my stop, I grew cold, realizing that the man had also stopped waiting for the bus I started to feel that detached, autopilot feeling. I just need to get to school, then I'll be fine, I remember thinking. Just then, another man riding a bike rode past us, then looped around, stopped, and waited beside me. When the bus got there, I got on the bus, then the big man, who sat not directly beside me, but in the road directly beside the row I sat on. Then the bike man put his bike on the front of the bus, which is going in the opposite direction he was riding, and got on and sat in the seat beside me. He did not say one word to me. After a couple stops, the big man got off rather abruptly, and when he did, bike man also got off and rode his bike the way he came from. I was very scared, but then I think the bike man was looking out for me that day. I wish I could thank him for being there. 
I scared a little girl just a few months out of high school and a total stranger. Thank you, bike man. I hope you're well.